Hello, welcome to another video on Code Tech and Tutorials. Today I'm wearing the same shirt as my last few videos because I'm just plowing through some videos in a row on the same day. And it's the same day. It's not a day. That's what, okay. Um, well, I'm going to teach you a little bit about making videos with Blender. A lot of people seem to want to do this. It's a good, pretty good free editor, but it has its limitations. And I want to go over those. And the example I'm going to give is from a video I made on my gaming channel where I did quite a bit of editing. I'm going to show you, just walk through the video and show you the techniques and what I had to do to get it all lined up. And I'm going to show you, you know, all that. So check it out. It's, it's Blender. Let me go to, I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of my face. Now you see me? Now you still see me. Okay, here we go. So um, I was I was playing I was playing some uh, PUBG and Choco Taco ended up absolutely destroying my team and I made a little video out of it. Link below if you want to see my gaming channel and see some cringe there. Uh, I have some fun doing that. It's a relatively unknown channel, so subscribe if you want to see that random chaos. I try to post some uh, entertaining videos when I have them. Not as often as this channel, though. But it's no secret that I have a gaming channel. All right, and it has its own little life. But that's really not the point of this. Let's uh, let's dig in here. So yeah, you can go see the full video, and you can see all this stuff I did. And basically, I'm just going to go through these techniques, walk through the video. The first part of this, this uh, first chunk of video here, I actually did in a different program. I was using OpenShot Video Editor, and there's some cool things about OpenShot, but, <laughs> well, just to be perfectly honest with you overall, it sucks. It There's a few things it does, it's actually made for video production unlike Blender, so there's a few things it does that is nice, like it's a little easier to transition your tracks, and you're just doing some simple stuff, it's a little better, and also it seems to handle varying frame rates and videos better so I did actually have to use this to translate the frame rates of, of the different videos because uh, I wanted to do everything here in Blender 60 FPS but if you bring in a 30 FPS in a 60 FPS video in Blender it doesn't know what to do and you're just gonna get weird stuff so just be aware that that's a thing all your video that you bring into Blender basically needs to be the same frame rate or you're going to have odd stuff happening and your audio is not going to line up with it. You might be able to work around it a little bit, but there's only so much you can really do. So I did use OpenShot to render some of my 30 FPS stuff to 60. That way I could get it that way. So starting right off, I have this little this starting point and this came from OBS and I had, I made some PNGs of some words, and if you watch this, the video, you'll see it kind of times with the, the my speaking. This is where I get pinned at a car, so I just had those words pop up, and it's a these words. I actually made them as 1080 uh, images, 1920 by 1080 images, with just a transparent background, and overlaid them on top, and just dragged them on there and change the length of them by grabbing the end to get it all lined up. And if you grab an end, you can hold control to make it snap. Alright, so let's continue on. I go forward here, I'm trying to find them, make a shot by his partner, I do this thing. And right here I do a scratch track. I actually did this in open shot. That's why you don't see any effects here. And and then after that, I could, this is as far as I could get before OpenShot bugged out from just adding a few effects. So I had to come into Blender. That's why I came to Blender. Because yeah, OpenShot is... <laughs> so you're probably wondering, how did you end up in this position? Yeah, I couldn't get past this this part. It's like OpenShot was just crashing, so I exported it and started doing the rest of the work in Blender. And this is where I did a little intro some ukulele sound and I put some keyframes in, in there to fade the sound out at the end. You can see the volume. So there are some keyframes in this little dope sheet over here I brought over just so I could see what was going on. And 
I have a few things going on here. This is the Vile Dragons Gaming Channel Presents. I put a transform on it to change the size of it so that it fit up there in the corner better. It's just an image. And I ended up putting these cuts down here. I don't remember why. Well, this one was just to, it was a clip of, that's just sound. So it's just a dark screen. This transparent turns into pure black when you render. And this image, which says Death by Taco, I think I have it fade in. Yeah, with the opacity right there, so I put a keyframe on that. And if you watch my previous video on Blender video editing, I talk more about keyframes and how to do those, but basically you just press I, hover over and press I, and it translates from the last keyframe. And then here I have some more keyframes. I had it scale up and then fade out, so it had this flying at you but fading out effect that you see sometimes. So scale up and then fade out. Like it was, so it's like it's flying through the screen, basically. That's the intention of that effect. And then it goes on. There's not a whole lot here. We basically fight a guy. It takes us a million shots to kill him. Eventually we get him. I blow up the car. This is how the car ends up in the middle of the field. I blow up the car because we came through smoke, so we couldn't kill him. And the car starts rolling after it blows up and rolls to the middle of the field. We finally get him somewhere here, right about here, I think. Um, next shot, maybe. This shot, boom. Finally get him. And I decide, okay, I'm going to run over and get his gear. And it was at this point that streamer Chaco Taco and his partner stumble across us and see, oh, hey, look, there's a guy at a burning car over there. Let's start, let's kill him. And they started popping shots at me, and I was like, oh, no. And that's where the video started, and I cut it. So that's why... I made it small. So to do this little picture-in-picture picture thing, well, let's see. First, I brought Chaco's video in, and it's all right here. I cut it up some, but I put mine over top of it and put a transform on it and used that transform to do scaling and positioning. And there's a lot of keyframes here to get it to do that. But, yeah, as you can see, it's scaling and going down here until I get it there eventually, and that way I reveal his video. And this is his audio. I cut our audio here because you heard it at the beginning. The same thing. You get to hear his play, and it's it's pretty hilarious. And let's see, what do we got here? Okay, so then I scale the video back up. I gotta click on it. Okay, so it shows the properties of whatever you click. Scale my video back up. Basically. <laughs> What happened here? It was pretty hilarious. So they were about to kill me. They had me pinned at this car. They were shooting at me. And then someone else headshot Chaco. And so I started going back to my video to show that I was healing. And I was like, okay, I'm healing up. Then I'm going to run kind of thing. And what happened here was my partner killed the guy that was shooting at Chaco Taco, effectively unpinning him so that they could continue their pressure on us in a second, which is a bizarre turn of events that was totally unprecedented. You never know that, oh, I should have left that guy live because he was actually helping us. It's hard to tell. We thought maybe he was the guy shooting at us. Ta Chaco Taco calls me some names here. He said, <laughs> at one point he says, with the guy running at the front, behind the car, he said, don't worry about that guy, he's a little weenie. <laughs> Just cracked me up. And then he said, oh, I think his partner killed the guy that was shooting at us. And I said, no, that was Tombo. Okay. So... We get back to this compound, they get all rezzed up, and then I scale down again, and they they headshot both of us at the same time. Chaco Taco and Krubadu. Both double headshot synchronized. And uh my partner and I both die, which is pretty hilarious. So that was it. And I did all those edits with Blender here, and I kinda walked through them. So yeah, there was this whole layer of my video. It was mostly just translating it to reveal his video behind. I had to do some tricky stuff with the volumes to try to get it to to be good. It was really hard to do to get it to sound right. I did. I noticed when I had overlapping audio, sometimes it was confusing. So I ended up just fully cutting it in some spots on on Chaco's part or on our part. And it took a while to get it to to feel right. And what is this here? Oh yeah, I 
This was Chaco's video. I did a cut here. This is actually the same video, but I wanted to put a transform on just a small part of it because I wanted to zoom in up there where it showed unknown shot whoever. And that was my partner killing. I don't know if that's kind of hard to see in the video. But yeah, I put this thing, this whole thing together using Blender. And at the end, just have a little outro. And instead of doing an alpha fade at the end, it's like you can do a fade out, or you can also just add a color. Shift A, color. Oh god, I don't know where to set that. Somewhere. But you can also add a color, have it at zero opacity so it doesn't show, and then you can have it become more and more visible to give the effect of a fade out. And you can do that with any color. You can change the color of it so you can fade to whatever color you want that way. If you don't want to just fade to black, that's another way of doing fades. And then I just have some banter and some script more random con. Okay, awesome. That's the end. Let's look at the properties real quick. I have it on... I don't know how the FPS ended like ended up as this. Okay, custom 60.1. So I had to have everything as 60 frames per second. A lot of these videos, like I said, tried to come in as 30. It was really awkward. Wouldn't line up with the sound, so I basically used OBS to render them at 60 and get everything 60 to bring into here. So you can't do everything with Blender. It doesn't handle everything. But let's see what other settings. So 100% resolution 1080. Um, let's see. I changed the folder it went to in this little output tab. And I also changed it to, let's see. What else did I end up clicking here? FFmpeg. And I put AAC. This defaults to no audio, so you get no sound if you do that. So that's the other thing I had to change. And I output quality, I set it up to lossless, which uh, is supposed to help perceptually lossless losses. But yeah, in my final render, I went up about as high as I could. Maybe even constant would have been better, but uh, it seemed to be okay. So that's it. And that's how. Uh, put together a full full video with, with Blender. And that's just a sample. Hopefully this helps some of you out there who are stuck trying to figure out what to do next. Yeah, it takes some, some careful analyzing of getting these keyframes right. In retrospect, one of the okay, one of the one of the flaws here with Blender is when you play it back, your audio doesn't stay in sync with the video and that's kind of annoying. So it's often hard to see how long things are. It can kind of go off the timing up here, but in retrospect, on the real video, these only flash on the screen for a split, split second. You can't even read them unless you pause. So I should have drugged these out, and it would have been easy to read them. So I kind of messed that up. Hindsight 2020, I didn't want to go back and re-render the whole thing because it took forever to render. But there you go. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this uh, helps out. If you're stuck on editing and trying to figure out what you can do and what you can't do, and if you're running into some of those frame rate pitfalls, a way around that to just use OpenShot is the solution I came up with to get them to whatever frame rate you want from there. And that's going to do it. Hope you have a good day and keep on keeping on. Peace out.